Hey and welcome to the All Stars Cars channel. Today's fun project, we've got a 2011 Audi A4 behind me and we've got to change the battery in it. The battery is weak, it's nine years old. This is a 2011 model. And uh, what's unique or interesting with a lot of the late model cars, I mean, uh, Audi, Volkswagen, BMW, could be even Ford, has a battery management system. So in this car, it's called a battery energy module which actually what it does is, and long story short, it monitors the charging status of the battery. So how much amperage basically the battery's putting out, how many volts need to go in to charge it, and it tells the alternator, you know, when to charge less, when to charge more. Now what's really important is when you swap out one of these batteries, a lot of guys just throw them in and set it down the road. But what you might not realize is as that battery gets older, which this one is, it's an original, it's nine years old, you have to actually code it or relearn or recalibrate, you could call it. There's a code on the battery called a BEM code, go figure, right? And um, what you need is a scan tool to program that in. Now, if you don't do it, what can happen is you have a old battery, which is, you know, should be weak, and a new battery, which is much stronger, the alternator is not going to know that because the BEM doesn't realize it, the module's not programmed, and it may overcharge the battery and just shorten the life of it. So, what I'm gonna show you today is the steps to get the battery out of the trunk back here, and then we'll go inside the car, program, or code the new one, and uh, we'll take it from there, so let's get to it. So let's start by popping the trunk here. So step one is gonna be getting all your crap out of the trunk, fortunately. This one doesn't have too much in it. Um, here's the new battery. And by the way, this came from the dealership. It was actually cheaper to get a new battery, less expensive than going to like one of the big box places. And I'm gonna show you this battery up close and show you what codes, where the information that you'll need is the serial number and all that good stuff. So let's get this stuff out. I already got my tools here set up. So that's step one. Step two, we got a bit of a protector mat here. Get that out and next up you have the carpet which there's two little clips up there I've already popped those loose and this whole thing comes out this carpet tray which reveals the spare tire and then we got this hole down right here so undo that and you want to yank out your spare it's a good time right now to check the pressure in your spare. A lot of people don't check it. Years and years go down the down. You're going down the road. You need it, and next thing you know, your spare tire is flat. So it's not a bad idea to put a few pounds in there of air. Then you've got this. Let me zoom in a little bit here for you. There you go. Next, we've got this cover that goes over the battery housing so you take this off and it goes this way here this is this stickers back towards you take that out and now let me get in real close and get some light set up all right so here's our battery down in here and next you've got your um, jack and tray this time you got kind of wiggle it up styrofoam so here's your jack and uh, lug your uh, wrench and all that stuff. Get this out of the way. And now you have access to the battery here, the uh, hold down bracket, and there are four uh, 13 millimeter bolts that hold this down. In fact, let me show you, so let me zoom in. Zoom in, let me just walk you in. So you can see what we're doing here. So you've got two here, these two, and then on the back, there's two down there, those two. So take those four, take those four bolts off or out, and uh, we'll have we'll have a next we'll have the next step, so to speak. Make sure you're on there, okay? Oops, it's good to go uh, lefty loosey. And the battery died. Okay, so when your battery dies and you don't have a backup to uh, 
keep moving, you go by hand. So get your ratchet and just go old school. These aren't too tight, so you can just break them, break the torque, and then pretty much get them out uh, by hand. So there you go, it's already loose, and I'll just uh, zip these out. Okay, got all four of these, put them aside so you don't lose them. And now this cover, be gentle with it, come right off. There we go, so that's easy enough, right? What step are we at now, like seven or I'm losing count. All right, now what you do is you got a cover here. So this cover is gonna slide off, slide out and Get that cover out of the way. Here's like step eight, whatever. Now we're down to the actual battery, and you've got your terminals here. Pop this cover off. That'll give you access to the positive, and then uh, here's your negative side. Now, when you disconnect the battery, you always disconnect the negative first, okay? And then when you go install the battery, you always put the negative on last. So that's a little tip and trick. So. Uh, let me grab, it looks like a 10 millimeter here, so I can get these terminals loose, and then we should be able to take that out. So before we pop those terminals off, I just want to test the battery. Now, my buddy said it was weak. I don't know if he had a jump started. I'm not sure uh, what the symptoms were, but I know when I pulled it in, I started this car, pulled it in here to the shop, it was a weak, very weak uh, start. You could, you could hear it, so um, let me get these clamps on here. I've got the AL 539. This is actually a cool little scan tool because it gives you, it'll read batteries. It does battery testing, but it also gives you uh, um, DTC information. You can clear codes. You can check live data like fuel trims and stuff. But I have it on battery test. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we're at 12.4. And, you know, that's not bad for the voltage, but we are concerned with, uh, you know, what kind of amps this is putting out. So you hook that up, says OK to continue. This is uh, one of those Euro batteries, so as far as, it's a regular battery, so we put regular, it's not a gel or an AGM battery. Um, it is, normally if you just had like an American car, you'd have your CCA. So you crow cranking amps or cranking amps. This is an EN. So right here on top of the battery dot, you can see it says 640A EN. That's for amp. So we're going to go EN, set it 640. We press OK, and it'll do our test. So we have to wait for it to analyze. There you go. It says replace battery, uh, voltage 12.41, measured 350, 355 amps en and rated at 640 which it is so it's only about half so anyhow um we're gonna swap this out at nine years old not not even going to consider anything else so let me shut my tester off yeah this is a cool little cool little deal right here it's called an auto link al 539 i'll leave a link in the description down below with that that does a lot that uh, that's a cool little tool and it also has a multimeter built in so let's uh, disconnect our terminals now so like I said we always start with the negative so it's a, and it is a 10 millimeter I think I mentioned that So take this off get that out of the way um, a good idea you know if you're not sure as to uh, that it might remove and touch the terminal again put a a towel or something around that just to keep it keep it safe. Get the sucker off. I think this pops off though. Uh, there it goes. Oh, it's attached. Okay, never mind. This cover back here 
is attached to a whole bunch of electronic cables back there. I'll keep that on. So don't take that off. All right. Now, I think we're ready to grab this bad boy. Swing her on out. Oh, we got one other thing to do. We got to we got to disconnect this connector right here. Hold on a second. This is our vent tube. So let me zoom it. Can you see? Yeah, you guys cannot see what I'm talking about here. Right over here, coming off the side, is a corrugated vent tube. So right there, that plugs in over here. There's a little port. So disconnect your vent tube. It's plastic. Now you can. Now you can. Take out one more bolt, my fault. <laughs> oh man, take out one more. There's a bracket. Let me show you that one. Oh man, step whatever. <laughs> you gotta love the Euro stuff, man. Here it is, right here. Take out this bracket bolt. And let me make sure we don't have one on that side. No, we don't. So take this one out. Let me zoom you out. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. You gotta love it. I was just watching uh, Smitty Smith and Knight's channel. He was swapping out a transmission in his 07 Chevy truck and he was going nuts with all the modern technology. They don't make anything easy on any car anymore. So, all right, as far as working on it. So, like I say, once we get this all back, we gotta program the new battery. All right, so let me pull this out and I'll compare it to the uh, the old one to the new one and tell you what's going on. This does have handles, which makes it a little bit easier. Let's talk about what's going on here. So we've got our old battery. We've got our new battery. It's built in or made in August 2020. What's nice about this one here, the positive has a red cover, not like the OEM with a black cover, which somebody might think is ground without paying attention to the big red cross right there. And um, make sure when you go to hook up your new battery that you take this cover off, the terminal cover, this just usually rips right off. So otherwise you're not gonna get a good connection, right? Anyway, what we need to look at here is the BEM sticker. So if you look right here on the original, the BEM code's right there. Now when we pull up our scan tool information, we should see uh, this model with that serial number right there. We're going to use the last 10 of that. And on this new battery, it's a different brand. This one's a mile, okay? They look exactly the same, but this one here is a, uh, right here, let's look at it. It's an Entertech Zet. M MX, okay? So, most likely this is made by like Johnson Controls. But here is the BEM sticker. There's none on top. It says C back of battery for the uh, 2D barcode. So, right there, let me turn this sideways without getting too dizzy. And, oops, we're backwards. Let's go this way. Made in Mexico. And um, you can see the code is here and uh, the serial number. So what we're going to do is we'll take a picture of that with the cell phone. And then when we uh, program, you know, we'll have that uh, information. So that's very important to know. And here is a close-up of that little vent tube or vent hole for the vent. It's important to hook up. Here was the original. So we'll put, put that back in if there's excess acid uh, vapors or gas pressure it'll have a place to go instead of dripping down into onto the metal and of course rotting the floor pan, the trunk pan out. Otherwise, uh, it's all pretty much looks the same. It's pretty close. And we have um, same, same amperage, 640 amp EN. So we're good there. So let's uh, drop it in. The installation is Pretty much the same, but let me show you guys what I do to the terminals right before I uh, hook them up. All right, get the new one in. And what's neat about this new one is it has a little sight glass there. Gives you an idea of the condition of the battery. Let me stick my head in here, get that set up. And before I do anything else, I've got one of these battery terminal uh, cleaners right here. If you're not familiar, it's uh, basically like a round wire brush both ends and we're going to clean those terminals 
that's how I do it. Only one way to do it right, and that's the way to do it. So you just go around here a couple times on top of these terminals, clean those up, because even though it's new, there can be some corrosion on there, and you want it like real bright and shiny, you'll see. You don't have to go crazy and continue to you know, turn and turn. Just get it cleaned up, and we'll do that. This is the male side right here. You pop the cap off, you get the male side. It goes into the terminal, give that a few twisties. If we had heavy corrosion on these terminals, then I would uh, go get the baking soda and, and water combo and get that acid off of there. So, what did I tell you about hooking that up? Our ground goes last, but before we do that, I like to put some... Yeah, I know it's dielectric. It's going against the grain, right? It's not supposed to conduct electricity, but what I do is I put a very small film on my finger, or mount on my finger, and just put a very light coating on this terminal. You'd be amazed at how long this will go without corroding. And then I put some inside the, I put some on the terminal and some on the con, in the connector, I should say. Maybe I called that a terminal. This is the terminal. That's the connector. So I'll just put a light coating on. Just taking an extra minute to get it done right. That's it. Okay. Takes two seconds and about two cents worth of silicone. Okay, put this down there. So now we're going to uh, put this mounting bracket in. And everything else is opposite of the way we removed it. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll get everything back in and then I will uh, fire up the camera. And like I said, we'll get the scan tool and get this bad boy programmed. The new battery's in and let's program before we put everything else back in. And I know it's working because as soon as I hooked up that ground, the uh, trunk light came on. Okay, so I have the uh, VCI hooked up into the uh, OBD port. I've got my Autel. This is the MS908 SP and it's Bluetooth, obviously. And the ignition is on. And let's, uh, let me see, let me hold this. Wow, the glare is bad. So let me, why don't I, let's just, I'll take you into the car. So there's our old part number and serial number and manufacturer. We go to diagnosis. Let's go to control unit. We go to 19, we'll find gateway down here. Click that. Let that load up. And I'll show you the process I went through. So you have all these selections here. Went to adaptation. And then you have documented adaptation. And then battery information replacement. So this will tell you, you know, what your coding is and how that works. So that's that's good information to know. And then you back out of that and you get the stored value. Now that's our new serial number, the 300 number there, the bottom one. I wound up using the uh, OE battery. Well, since we replaced it with an OE battery, wouldn't take that other uh, manufacturer code, I guess it is, and the ECM number, but it did change the serial number, which is date coded. So you could go to here to set new. Now your old one, your original one will be there, right? So you put set new value. And you go in here and change, you know, whatever. Let's see if the old one was in here. Yeah, so here, no, it's not. It's not there. So I basically changed the last, what is this, three, six, nine, ten digits. So when I put in, when I try to put in, this is what the sticker said, the 000 EMC, and then, of course, our serial number. It would not take it. It would not save it. But when I left the manufacturer, the OE number here, the 8KO with the MLA, it was fine with it. I'm good with it. It knows that it's new. You press OK. And, um, you know, it's going to say, do you want to set the new value? I'm just going to click yes. I don't need to because it's already been saved. But um, it's in there. And then it'll tell you set OK. So you know you're, you're good. 
you click OK and then you should see it on this screen where it says channel number four battery information replacement you should see your new serial number right there so that's it it's all set to go um, shouldn't see any uh, I have the hood open that's why we got that it says media that's for the radio but the uh, hoods open right now shouldn't see any uh, warning lights on there about a weak battery in fact what's cool on the scan tool right now it's charging and I don't know if it's coming up with the glare but it's 13.83 volts so it's charging up nicely and uh, we're all set so with the new battery in or even with your old battery let's say you want to check the uh, functionality of it we could go to diagnosis go to control unit go down to 19 over to 19 I should say and here we'll go to live data and the BEM is going to report this data to us some gosh I'm trying to get that glare off here we go um, read by channel we want advanced measure value let that load up so what we can do now is we can scroll through here it's just telling us our can active let's go down to the BEM stuff the battery this battery types okay battery current battery voltage good to know temperatures where's the like the state of charge 73 percent currently um, let's see here battery aging you know so this is brand new battery so we're at hundred percent so anyhow my point was right here here's all the resistance values so this stuff could come in handy um, and if you want to look at your old battery and check it out, I kind of wish I had done that previously so I could have seen just how bad it was. But anyway, you can get a lot of information out of your scan tool uh, pretty quickly and easily that way. All right, we're all set. So just make sure you get that BEM programmed. You don't want your alternator to undercharge or overcharge and uh, that'll make that battery energy module nice and happy so it's fairly simple get all your other stuff back in the trunk button it down hopefully you don't have too much back there right and uh, that's about it so thanks for stopping by the channel check me out on Instagram it's Ozstar with the number one I've got plenty of repair videos right here on YouTube and I'll see you on the next one take it easy